Uh, honored to be here today, and I'm, uh, I also want to say congratulations to the Entrepreneur of the Year Award winners, whoever you may be. And uh, again, a brief history on me. I'm a 1984 graduate of Okemos High School, where I was a below average student, but a hard worker. So if you have challenging kids or grandkids at home, have faith. <laughs> I'm a 1988 graduate of Northern Michigan University where I started with a GPA of uh, 1.68 <laughs> but ended up on the Dean's List with a criminal justice degree. Go figure. Um, I guess you could have called me an average, hardworking, hard-playing, liberal college student. Now in the real world, I'm a hardworking, staunch, fiscal conservative. That's all the politics I'm going to talk about today. So. I'm married to a lovely lady, Gabrielle. We've been married for 23 years. We have three wonderful kids, Christina, who's a senior in nursing at uh, uh, Eastern Michigan University, and Austin's a senior at Spring Lake High School, and my youngest, Riley, he's a freshman at Spring Lake High School. I have a very average but hardworking, stubborn family. We don't take no easily. And if we can do what we've done, you can all do it too. And I'm sure some of you already are. So I have a lot to talk about today. The history of two men in a truck, our growth and where we are today, uh, what I think has contributed to our success, and uh, lessons that we've learned along the way while building our business. And I have a lot of slides to go through. So two men in a truck started in the early 80s when my brother Brig and I started hauling brush in an old 1967 Ford pickup truck while we were in high school. Do you remember the old three in the tree, some of you? Um, though it was only spending money back then, our customer base and referral base grew with every customer that we served. Our advertising budget back then was $2 out of every move went into a cookie jar to place an ad in the little Okemos newspaper then some of the money went into the gas tank and the rest of the money went straight into our pockets. Sometimes I think we made more money then than we do now. Um, to give you a little scope of where we are today, last year alone, system-wide, we spent $7,492,797 in advertising. So that cookie jar is growing a little. Uh, when it was time, for Brig and I to go to college, the calls kept coming in for those two nice young boys to help people move some things. At that time, our mother, Mary Ellen Sheets, decided to keep the business going. So when my brother and I came back from college for Christmas, spring, or summer vacations, we would have a job to come back to. Every time we came home, it seems like we came back to one more truck. As the business continued to grow, she decided she didn't like the name. Back then, it was called Men at Work Movers, named after a very popular music group in the early 80s. <laughs> so we had a very serious roundtable meeting at a bar called Rick's in East Lansing. <laughs> and we decided that since all of our ads already used the words two men in a truck and generic products were big at the time, we would just keep it simple and call it two men in a truck. So you remember the generic products, beer, paper towel. Um, it also benefited us because it's cheaper to buy white trucks than colored trucks. <laughs> All right. It was at that time, about 1985, that Mary Ellen finally incorporated the business and made it all legal. Speaking of legal, after doing business her first year as two men in a truck, she showed a $1,000 profit. And not knowing how to do taxes, she donated, she picked 10 nonprofit organizations and donated $100 to each one of them. And it's for that reason that we later added the tagline, Movers Who Care. And I'll get into that a little bit more later. In 1985, Mary Ellen also purchased her first moving van for $350. This is the only money she ever spent on this company out of her own pocket. In 1986, she purchased her first new truck, and she's pictured here with her first mover, other than my brother Brig and I, Joe. From 1985 to 1988, we ran the business from our grandma's garage. That little lean-to on the right-hand side was two men in a truck headquarters. <laughs> grandma was lovingly known as the yard boss by the movers and drivers. She would let us know if the trucks, uh, what, tr what time the trucks came in, 
and if the trucks left late in the morning she was also known to crawl under the trucks once in a while and wire up bumpers um, in a way she was our first manager what she's doing here is she's pulling the money out of that's in her back porch of her house and there was an old wood box for firewood and the mover we cut a hole in the top and the movers would drop the money in there at night and um, one morning we came in and there was a lock on the front of that and that was all busted off and the police were there and they're doing their investigative thing and they realized there were never hinges on the back of that on the back of that thing so they could have just flipped it up uh, my grandma took this picture from a rocking chair this was her view from her living room and um, there's a note from her diary that says Mary Ellen has three of these moving vans now they park them in my backyard. She pays me $75 a month, not bad. So it's, <laughs> parking's gone up. Um, but we decided it was time to get the buz business out of grandma's yard after the, the big break in. Our logo, uh, Mary Ellen drew the logo in 1983 on a napkin. She said, John and Brig, you guys need a logo to represent you. So she, she doodled that and it kind of has a three-dimensional look to it. That was actually a mistake. The, um, the windshield has like three lines. She drew a line, didn't like it. She drew another line, didn't like it. <laughs> Same with the hood, and she never got rid of the old lines, and so it just kind of stuck. And when I opened my franchise after college in Grand Rapids, I had a um, marketing executive in my living room to sell me an ad in a magazine, and he said, do you have a more professional logo we can use? I almost threw the guy out. And uh, I'm like, my mom drew that. That's what our company's based on in a way, you know? But what I find funny now is our company's grown to the size that we are. People ask us, who designed your logo? It's brilliant. <laughs> In 1987, my sister Melanie opened the first franchise before we were actually franchised in Atlanta, Georgia. And she was also a pharmaceutical sales rep at that time. Also in 1987, a friend of my mother's, whom she met at a Lansing Chamber event. By the way, thanks for being here, my plug for Chambers. Every Chamber event I've been to, I've made at least two contacts. So. Talk amongst yourselves and make some contacts. Um, anyway, this lady approached my mother and said, Mary Ellen, you ought to franchise your business. And my mom said, franchise? Who'd want a franchise? All we do is move people. And the lady laughed and said, well, all we do is feed people's cats and dogs while they're away on vacation, and we're franchised. She owned a franchise system called Pet Nanny. So Mary Ellen got a hold of this lady's attorney, and they put together an offering circular, and she ended up awarding her first franchise in 1989. And this is the first recruiting show that we ever did in Detroit. Uh, my sister Melanie with me on the left, and then our mother Mary Ellen between us a long time ago. In 1989, fresh out of college, my wife Gabrielle and I opened our franchise in Grand Rapids. I was 23 years old. We grew it to about 22 trucks and 75 employees. And as part of our family succession planning, I sold it in 2007 um, so I could concentrate more on Two Men in a Truck International, our headquarters in Lansing. And there we go. In 1990, my brother Brig opened a Two Men in a Truck in Marquette, Michigan. And that is actual snow depth, by the way. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That's why I took the picture. In 1994, Mary Ellen was asked to run for the state senate. She accepted and asked me to go to Lansing to run the Lansing Two Men in a Truck, in addition to the one I was getting started in Grand Rapids. Then Mary Ellen asked my sister Melanie to quit her successful career in pharmaceutical sales sell her franchise and move back to Lansing from Atlanta and come run the franchising business. And we had about 34 franchises at the time. There was one catch. Mom couldn't afford to pay us for one full year. So what do you think we told her? Of course, who's not gonna help out your mother? And we had total faith in the business. So though Mary Ellen was able to incorporate the franchise 
um, incorporate and franchise the business and take it over from where my brother and I were leaving it, Melanie was able to make several improvements and raise the bar several levels. A couple years later, Brig, our brother, was asked to sell his franchise in Marquette, move his family back to Okemos, and be in charge of franchise recruiting and awarding. So now we truly have a family business. And people often ask, what's it like working with your family? And I can tell you that since we all have different gifts to offer, and we all played an intricate role in the creation and the growth of the company, we love it. My brother and I started it. If we were never involved, it wouldn't be here. Our mother took it over when we were ready to let it fizzle out and go to college. She incorporated it, she franchised it, she ran with it. If she had not done that, it wouldn't be here. Then later, when it was running into some serious growing pains, our sister added a lot of structure, hired a great staff, which got us up to the next level. And if she would not have done that, it wouldn't be here. So this is the board of directors. Mary Ellen Sheets is founder. Our sister Melanie is the chair. Brother Brig is the CEO. And I'm executive vice president, or one of the stick men. On this particular day, Mary Ellen is um, signing stock 25% over to each of us. It was part of business succession planning. I hope you're all doing it. Um, so she's pretty much retired now. So now we all have skin in the game and we're all growing the company. So um, we're also very active outside of our companies. Uh, Melanie is on the board of directors of the International Franchise Association and the Lansing Chamber of Commerce. Brig is on the board of BLM, Business Leaders of Michigan, maybe you've heard of them. And I'm on the board of directors of the American Moving and Storage Association, the Michigan Movers Association, and the Michigan Chamber of Commerce. So it's very important to be involved outside of your companies. You learn a lot, you get a lot of contacts, and um, you're, obvious, you're here, so you're obviously doing some of that. In 1993, we, we rented our first franchisor office outside of our mother's downtown Lansing apartment. It was the upstairs of this old house on the left on Michigan Avenue, also in downtown Lansing, and we slowly rented the whole thing. It was a pretty rough area. We would frequently find homeless people sleeping on the stairs in the morning of that porch. We would also find remnants from ladies of the night and unlicensed pharmacists in the parking lot. <laughs> I stole that line from my mom, I love it. In 1998, we moved into this new building on the right. When we moved into this building, we thought we had arrived. That smell, you know, of a new building. Well, we outgrew this building as we were moving into it and had to lease more space down the road. This is the first two men in a truck moving company office after we left our grandma's yard. We renovated an old gas station. This is our first fleet of trucks. Notice all the lettering and the fonts are all different. We didn't quite understand brand consistency at that time. <laughs> And when I look at these trucks, I remember exactly which ones had ramps and which ones didn't have a ramp. And if you had a truck without a ramp, it was going to be a long day. In 2002, we moved into this building that was built and um, that we had built, and we outgrew this building in two years. Also in 2002, Truckee, our mascot, was born. In 2003, we had another groundbreaking and expanded our new building. We probably had about 45 people working at our headquarters at that time. At the end of 2004, we completed the new addition to our headquarters and we moved in. This building is 39,000 square feet and it includes our center called Stickman University or SMU, our training center. As part of SMU, this new addition includes a two-story, fully functional, 1,200 square foot training house. This training house includes items such as a grandfather clock, grand piano, working washer and dryer, dishwasher, bedroom, office, all kinds of things you'd encounter on a move. We also have toy guns, fake drugs, play money, hidden all over the house to teach our movers how to deal with different circumstances they may encounter on a move. Last year in 2011, we did a $300,000 overhaul to our Stickman University 
to make it more comfortable for our franchisees who will be there for two weeks at a time. We added a lot of uh, comfortable furnishings, color, everything was gray when we built the building, um, and a lot of technology, including smart boards, wireless internet, and about 16 computer workstations for them to uh, learn our software on. In 2006, we added wind and solar to our home office building. In 2011, we removed it because it didn't work for us. Um, that was expensive, but not everything we do is perfect. I thought about removing this slide, but that's reality. <laughs> <laughs> Though our growth rate over the years has been phenomenal, the core values that my brother and sister and I learned from our parents are still part of the core culture of two men in a truck. I cannot overstate the importance of having a clear mission statement and core values for your company. It's the foundation that you'll train on and operate your company by. So our core culture includes the following as our mission statement. Our commitment is to continuously strive to exceed our customers' expectations in value and high standard of satisfaction. And then our core purpose is to be a role model in our industry. And we're actually in two industries. We're in the moving and the franchising industry. And then our core values, which include integrity, to always conduct oneself with honesty and fairness, give back to the community. This goes back to when Mary Ellen gave her first $1,000 away. And the grandma rule, to treat everyone the way you'd want your grandma treated. Hopefully you love your grandma. <laughs> Care, to have compassion for family, customers, coworkers, and community. And my favorite, be your best and have fun. To be the best professionally and personally while enjoying life and having fun. Okay, some lessons that we've learned along the way. Um, have you heard of the business life cycle? I hadn't until just a couple of years ago, and then I saw this graph and I was like, oh my gosh, we've, we've lived this. So if this line represented our business, it would continue up like a snake, with every peak representing time for change. Had we not embraced that change, we would either be out of business or on our way out of business. For example, the first peak could be when Mary Ellen decided to franchise the business. The second peak could be when we installed our first software program. It allowed um, a few customer service reps to schedule several trucks at the same time. A third peak could be when we realized that we needed to update our leadership at our headquarters. Let me talk about that for just a second. This is something that everyone needs to look at in their own organizations. Has your business or organization outgrown your leadership staff? Are they legacy employees? This was a difficult challenge for my brother when he took over as the CEO of Two Men in a Truck. These were really good people, they were like family. Um, but the company outgrew their skill sets, it wasn't personal. And a lot of severance packages went out because we didn't want to hurt their livelihood. And we had a lot of costs and headhunter fees to find replacements. And this was a very expensive but very necessary proposition. And one of the reasons, too, I bring this up is because I've, I've experienced it firsthand in my franchises in Grand Rapids, and um, we've seen a lot of our franchisees that don't want to part ways with a manager that they brought in off the trucks, who were great guys, up to six trucks or so. But um, once you get beyond that in our business, you need different skill sets. So the fourth peak could be when our infrastructure and software that we created in the late 80s was outdated and ready to implode. It could have stopped our whole system from operating. And right now we are smack dab in the middle of a $15 million IT automation overhaul, which will provide system-wide centralized data in the cloud, including QuickBooks accounting, system-wide visibility of assets, our trucks and our estimators, logistics components, and it will help us become a world premier moving provider. So here are more lessons that I've learned over my 30 years in business. Part of me thinks I'm getting old, but the other part of me remembers I was 15 years old driving a moving van around Lansing. Um, markets are dominated one customer at a time. Think of each customer as a referral base, then sell them your best products or services. 
Number two, if your business isn't growing, it is slowly going out of business. This gives me a sense of purpose in my business every day. Are you offering the best product or service? Do we have the best people in place to serve our customers? Am I providing these people the best tools to get the job done? If your business isn't growing, you can't afford to do any of these. Uh, number three, we are always hiring good people. If someone comes in with an exceptional resume, we will do all that we can to place them. We can either upgrade a current staff member or figure out a spot where they can help us grow our company. I want exceptional people working for me before my competitors. Number four is measure everything. If you don't measure it, you cannot improve it. Number five, for, and these are for me personally, the things that I've learned. Uh, my litmus test for all business decisions has always been, does it align with our mission statement and our core values? And is this what is best for the company? What's best for me is to pay myself more, a heck of a lot more, but that's not good for the company. What's best for a manager who the company may have outgrown several years ago is to keep that person on because we don't want to affect their livelihood. But that's not what's best for the company. Um, number six, this sounds a little against the grain, but the customer is not always right. Our job as stewards of our companies is to be fair and treat everyone with passion and dignity, but not give away the farm. And finally, as I learned from Fred Meyer when he spoke years ago, delegate, delegate, delegate. So he wasn't on every cash register. Brig and I are not on every truck. So here's where we are today. This little moving company that was started by my mom, sister, brother, and I is now the largest franchise moving company in North America. We currently operate in the United States, Canada, Ireland, and the UK with 220 locations and over 1,400 trucks on the road and about 4,300 employees. The business continues to be privately held by our family. Uh, last year alone, we performed 353,761 moves. Also in 2011, we had a record year grossing just under $220 million, which is nearly an 18% gain over 2010. And our goal for 2012 is 250 million in sales, and we are currently on target to hit that. We have about 70 employees at our corporate headquarters in Lansing, supporting our hardworking <coughs> franchisees. And this year, we are rolling out our new software and IT, as I mentioned earlier, and it's the largest financial investment we've ever made in our company. Two Men in a Truck has brought over $106 million into the Michigan economy from royalty payments, and this is really good for our state. Since Mary Ellen's $1,000 donation, Two Men in a Truck has donated over $15 million to charity. More than 38% of our franchisees gross more than $1.3 million a year. And in 2011, 70% of our franchisees grew with double digit growth. 15% of our franchisees grew more than 50%. And this is before the return of the housing market. So we're very excited for the future. All right, well, thank you very much. <clears throat>